Hanging dance rose to avant consciousness in the early years of the 21st century. Classifying the musical stylings of the gang is a daunting affair, and often leads one to adopt language as poetic and abstruse as that which lead singer Lizzie Bugazzos weaves into her lyrics. Art Review caught up with them in the run-up to their gig at the 2008 Whitney Biennial, which promises to push the band into the still more expansive terrain of interdisciplinary performance and installation. Well, basically, we're going to construct this wall. We'll be performing behind the wall. But the wall is made of mirrors. And the mirror side faces the audience. And then uh, there's going to be a camera filming us behind the wall as well that will be have a live feed to that projector up there. And the projector is projecting this camera's image onto the mirrors. So when you project onto a mirror, you can't see it, and there's no image that shows up. So I'm going to slowly sort of use white paint and basically paint in ourselves. It was the release of their 2005 LP, God's Money, that found the gang at their finest, harnessing their freewheeling improvisatory energy into the semblance of melodies, hooks, and other songwriting staples without failing to sustain a sense of open-ended sonic possibility. There is a time, one of the Times Review of, of God's Money put it particularly well, which was, it said, you know, where do all of these sounds come from? And ultimately concludes, these sounds come from New York, you know, like this is the sound of like a band that comes from that like place which is like such a like messy mix of influences and ideas and everything else, you know. You know, I think when we all kind of first started playing, it was a, there was like a vibe that felt really good and natural and it was kind of exciting that the fact that we were living in New York and there's all these different things happening and something that we always talk about is this place Josh used to work which was like a cat, well pink pony on mm -hmm. Ludlow which is still there but in a much different incarnation but uh, when he used to work there it was a place where there was all this kind of free jazz music happening and like literally free too you just walk in mm -hmm. and people just jamming and that was like very inspiring and influential, but I think as the years have gone by, at least me personally, I've, I'm less and less interested in kind of the idea of like New York music or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were hanging out with so many different kinds of people, you know, I mean, like movie people and mm -hmm. designers and artists and, you know, so it's just like you're kind of coexisting in this world that's really diverse. And I think each step of the way, we kind of like gain like more to put in the, in the garbage hump, you know what I mean? Like you grab it from the street and put it in the tin can, you know, and it keeps getting like so. That's kind of where we're. <laughs> me about this context is that you know for the first time in over 40 years now these armories aren't aren't being used just for an art fair um, they're being used for really radical art and uh, uh, it's you know a pretty exciting time to be in New York and kind of witness all this stuff mm -hmm. and participate in it yeah and participate in it I have a gallery in, in downtown New York at the southern end of the Bowery mm -hmm. Um, my first exhibition in January 2007 was Brian DeGraw. The name of his exhibition was Behead the Genre, and it was about a disappointment of the uh, tendency or the, uh, you know, the, the uh, impulse to not only create uh, like rigid categorizations in this Renaissance art idea, but also uh, having stylistic expectations from artists is something that could be extremely limiting to the creative process. Has putting this together, has it given you guys some ideas or thoughts about where you want to sort of take your collective practice in the future? Now that we are doing it together, it's the sharing of the responsibilities and the, the surprise of working on these different levels, it's been amazing. Mm. So I don't really know how to categorize it. All I know is that I do what I do. Gang Gang Dance produces music now, um, but maybe next year they might want to make a play. 
and uh, uh, get involved with theater. So I think uh, that's kind of ex what's exciting about following a, a group of artists like that is uh, that the, the creative process is a constant adventure for them.